Hello. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. Hi, Mina. Thank you for, um, and everyone else. Hi, everyone. Thank you for inviting me to speak today at this showcase. And uh, yeah, today I am going to be speaking about uh, epigenetic biomarkers for smoking and some of the implications that they might have on our understanding of social differences in health. Um, so, um, uh, this was done as part of my um, PhD project with uh, Mina and also uh, Leo Shawick, and I'm part of uh, the SOCB um, CDT, so you know. Uh, so throughout this uh, uh, talk, I'm going to be um, discussing two, two main aims, uh, really. The first is um, how we construct DNA methylation based biomarkers of smoking and how um, the ones that I constructed might compare to existing methods. And then secondly, I'm going to be seeing how um, socio-demographic factors might influence um, how these biomarkers compare to self-reports. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to be, um, obviously I've been using Understanding Society throughout the uh, duration of this project. Um, so uh, Understand Society has this uh, brilliant uh, DNA methylation resource. Um, the first for, um, taken from about 1,500 BHPS participants, meaning that we have about 15 years of smoking data uh, for that group. And then there's another DNA methylation resource, which is um, a approximately uh, 2,500 um, participants, uh, which were taken from the general population sample. So they're uh, very uh, nationally representative, I should say. And then obviously I've made um, mostly used understanding society throughout this, but um, just so I have an out of sample replication study, I've also used uh, NCDS and data from them. Um, so what did I do with this um, data? So going back to the first aim, um, how do we even construct um, epigenetic biomarkers of smoking? And actually what are epigenetic biomarkers of smoking in the first place? So. I won't go too much into the underlying biology, because um, in a way, in terms of biomarker, biomarkers, it doesn't matter too much. But um, when I'm talking about um, biomarkers of smoking here, I'm talking about methods that have used DNA methylation in order to estimate smoking. So DNA methylation, it's a process where essentially methyl groups are added or taken away from the DNA. And in doing so, that process changes the way that that DNA is structured. And then when you change the way that DNA is structured, it changes how um, it, it effectively changes how um, genes in that area can be switched on and off, let's say. And so if you imagine um, uh, you have a cell and um, on top of the of this hill, this is a um, some photos by Waddington, uh, just to display the uh, epigenetic landscape that a cell goes through. So uh, when the cell's at the top of the mountain and it's traveling da uh, down the hill through the life cycle of the cell, it uh, differentiates um, and becomes um, uh, specialized and the cell then fills very specific roles. But one thing that's perhaps more interesting about DNA methylation is that it can um, respond to lots of things that we are exposed to in our environment. Um, uh, so, for example, smoking, we now know, uh, heavily influences DNA methylation. And because it does that, we can use DNA methylation to estimate smoking. So, um, biomarkers of smoking here then. A biomarker is really just anything biological that we can measure that we can then use to characterize or identify some kind of disease or pathology. And so the good thing about using DNA methylation as a biomarker of smoking is that there are really strong differences that you can see. So um, for example, you can use just one 
CPG site, which is where DNA methylation often happens. And you can measure DNA methylation at that one site in the AHRR gene, for example. Now, the AHRR gene is involved in toxin cleanup and things like that. So if you look at the graph on, um, on my screen on the right, you can see here that um, in smokers, which are the red points, uh, DNA methylation at AHRR is much, much lower, which is why we can use this um, to estimate smoking. Now, another benefit of using um, a DNA methylation-based biomarker of smoking is the fact that um, is the fact that you can um, is the fact that a DNA methylation-based biomarker of smoking works pretty much just as good in any population that you look at, whereas it's been proven previously that the accuracy of self-reports for smoking vary drastically depending on the population that you're looking at. Um, so by using DNA methylation to measure smoking, we have a lot more consistency across different studies. So that's obviously massively beneficial. Now, um, I won't go too much into this slide, but um, effectively what we do to create these um, um, methylation-based biomarkers of smoking is if we either use an index, a smoking index, which give us, gives a kind of measure of deviation in DNA methylation from a non-smoker reference. And then you have um, a methylation score. Now a methylation score is quite similar to a polygenic score instead of, except instead of using SNPs, you're using um, methylation measured at CPG sites. So what a methylation score does, which is most commonly used, is it um, weights DNA methylation at your smoking C CPGs. Um, and then you kind of take the sum of that and you use that score. So a higher methylation score equals more smoking. Uh, okay. And then um, you could even take these methylation scores a little step further and actually use it to um, indicate nominal smoking data. So instead of just having a, a score where you're not sure which threshold specifies a smoker or not, you can instead have a um, just a prediction of do they currently smoke, um, do they not, for example. Okay. So I won't, again, I won't go too much into this slide, but um, I did a, a systematic comparison effectively of biomarkers of smoking. And um, they all work fairly well for distinguishing between non-smokers and active current smokers, um, some better than others. Um, however, when you start trying to estimate X smoking from DNA methylation, that's when you kind of run into issues. And overall, the best uh, sort of biomarker was by uh, McCartney et al. And I can share that reference with you if need be. Um, and also, um, but yeah, generally, you can um, predict smoking very well from DNA methylation. So that's great to know. Um, okay. Uh, and this is just to reiterate the points that I've already discussed. So you can estimate smoking from DNA methylation, um, especially non-smoking and active smoking. Obviously, estimating X smoking is a bit difficult, more difficult. Yeah, and McCartney was the best one. So going on to um, so now we have these um, epigenetic biomarkers of smoking. What's of particular interest is how well these biomarkers work in different um, groups of people. So the second aim, and um, perhaps maybe of more interest here, is to see what, if any, socio-demographic factors influence the agreement between self-reports of smoking and the biomarkers of smoking. And then I was also interested to see if um, controlling for smoking using DNA methylation rather than self-reports influences um, some kind of known social gradient in health, um, which I'll go on to. So, it, um, so as I alluded to earlier, it has been suggested that um, if you're measuring smoking just using self-reports that people under-report smoking because you know it's 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 not seen particularly favorably these days and so if you're asking people to self-report smoking they'll underestimate it um, and also how well self-reports reflect 
real smoking, again, differs between different populations. So the fact that we can use a biomarker of smoking is brilliant because we now have an objective measure of smoking and it might give us a much tr truer reflection of smoking in, um, in a particular population. So DNA methylation isn't the first, isn't the only way that you can biochemically assess smoking. There was another, um, there has been previous, previous methods to do so, and that one is cotinine. So cotinine is a, a cotinine is a metabolite of smoking. And it's been used before as a biomarker of smoking. The issue is cotinine has a half-life of a day. So if somebody doesn't smoke, let's say, in the day or two leading up to them visiting the clinic and getting their cotton in measured, then you might inaccurately say that they're a non-smoker when actually they are a smoker, they just haven't smoked in the last day or so. However, <clears throat> whereas DNA methylation is uh, a lot, uh, is far more long lasting. In fact, some people even suggest that um, differences in smoking and DNA methylation can last decades, <clears throat> potentially. So the, um, obviously there's a massive benefit to using DNA methylation over cotton then. And um, previously people have looked to see what sort of factors influence the agreement between self reports and cotton in measured smoking. And really we see the typical things that we would expect. So um, people who are more exposed to secondhand smoke, people who live with smokers, um, ex-smokers, and people who had fewer years of education were all more likely to be misclassified than their uh, counterparts, let's say. So then I wanted to see how this, how did this look for DNA methylation and how did self, how did the agreement between self reports and DNA methylation measured smoking uh, differ between a socioeconomic gradient? So I ran some logistic uh, regression models. So the outcome, um, uh, so the exposure here being the agreement between the two methods and the exposure is the either education or socioeconomic group. And so you can see here that I actually, interestingly, I see the opposite of what they saw in cottonine. So actually it's, um, more educate uh, uh, people with fewer years of education who were more accurately classified um, by smoking status by DNA methylation. So, so people um, with fewer education, ed people with fewer educational attainment, or um, people of like a lower socioeconomic group. Um, or working in more routine occupations, I should say, were more likely to accurately report their smoking than their more affluent um, peers. Um, and I don't, and, and, and this maybe was initially surprising because it's um, not what we saw for cotton in, but actually um, the papers that came out uh, looking in cotton in came out about, you know 20 years ago while we could still smoke inside for example so it is definitely a possibility that that um gradient socioeconomic gradient might have changed and actually we do see that in smoking epidemiology that there's been a sort of flip of the social groups who smoke and the ones who don't so yes um more educated and more affluent people were uh, more likely to misreport um, their smoking, let's say. And it, uh, this is just reiterating that point again. Um, and I should say here that it, it um, socioeconomic factors made a much bigger difference in um, identifying smoking, so positive uh, cases of smoking rather than um, non-smoking. That makes sense, right. So then how does this influence, um, so, so why does this matter? Why, why do we need to know whether or not the agreement is the same across different social groups? And that's because we know that um, poor health is in um, poor, poor social groups is a ubiquitous finding. And that even though we know health behaviors 
um, mediate these differences. We're not really sure how much of this, these differences are mediated by health behaviours. Um, okay, I'll just quickly finish up because I've run over time a little bit. Um, yes, so the benefit of using these objective measures of smoking through DNA methylation um, could help us explain how much of these social gradients in health are mediated by smoking and how much of it is just measurement error where we're not measuring smoking very well. And so I ran some um, linear regression models where I, I, I basically, um, it's looking at the role of education or socioeconomic position on inflammation. And uh, we can see here basically that um, uh, the association of the different smoking measures changes uh, uh, with inflammation changes. So the methylation based smoking measures tend to be more strongly associated with inflammation than self reports. However, whether we control for smoking using self reports or whether we control for smoking using um, DNA methylation didn't change our uh, social gradient in inflammation. So that gives, in my opinion, more strength to social differences in health because it didn't change whether we can, whatever way we control for smoking. And again, that's just those points there again, reiterating it. So um, yeah, that's me.